Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roll, and today I'm excited to announce the brand new TIG Weld 200SX. The 200SX has a 60% duty cycle at 200 amps and is both AC, DC, and dual voltage, both 110 and 220. I've been using the Longevity TIG Weld 200SX in a professional setting for the last couple of weeks. I've welded everything from 250 thousandths 6061 T6 aluminum down to 40 thousandths 4130 chromoly. Even did a magnesium patch job with it and I tell you what, the stock parameters that are put inside this machine make it so easy and simple to set up. Take you through the panel really quick. We have power, we have an overheat light. If you exceed the duty cycle you'll get an overheat light and it will suspend welding until things have cooled off enough. This does have dual cooling fans that run very quiet. Machine's running right now. You have your amp adjust. You have a clearance effect, which I've found that about the number two, positive two position works the best. And what that does is that just basically adds more heat to your material or puts more heat in your tungsten. Uh, don't be afraid to play with it and see what works best for you. But that's basically the only thing in this that's kind of a fine tunable. You got pre-flow, I set somewhere around uh, three tenths of a second and post-flow depending on the job you're doing anywhere from three seconds to eight seconds. You have two rocker switches, one would be up for stick, down for TIG and you basically have AC which would be your magnesium and aluminum and DC for the rest. You have foot panel and panel control. That's it. Simple, easy to use, easy to set up, and just start welding. The 200SX comes pre-wired with a 220 plug already on it. We have a pigtail here that we simply plug the 220 outlet into and plug this into the wall. The auto voltage inside the unit automatically changes it over to 110. So what do we have? We have a very lightweight, portable unit that now is very versatile for just about any job whether it's in the shop or out in the field. Here's the brand new regulator that's supplied with this machine. If you notice it's actually the black on the outside is in liters per minute and the red inside ring is done in cubic feet per hour. So no conversion ne necessary on this unit. Uh, simple regulator just gets screwed into your bottle like this. Provide a little bit of torque on that. And then we're supplied with a argon feed hose. Simply gets installed here. And then this torques down with a 17 millimeter wrench. For the back of the machine, same thing. Take this. Screw this into the argon port at the bottom. 17 millimeter again, and we'll just give it a nice torque down. Another thing to note, this will be your power switch. Up is on. You got the dual fans running. We'll notice that the, the new fans are real quiet on this machine. Uh, barely even know it's running. For the ground, we're supplied with a very nice ground, very nice spring tension that will clamp to our workpiece or to our table. And then for the ground installing on the machine, you'll just simply insert, give it a twist. Hooking up with the TIG torch is super simple. We'll just take this, install it in here, and we'll take a 19 millimeter and just kind of give it a nice torque down. Now you will notice that out of the TIG hookup we have a cannon plug that we can hook up to the panel if we're going to use the torch trigger on the torch. Uh, myself, I'm a foot pedal guy so we will opt for the foot pedal in this installation. Here's a shot of our foot pedal and when we do hook the foot pedal into the unit this now becomes our amperage control and first time ever we do actually have a little scale on this that tells you how many amps that you're actually dialing in. Here's a WP-17 air-cooled torch. Uh, first thing I noticed with this torch is, wow, this thing is very small. 
um, holds well in your hand. Um, we do have a torch trigger on it. It's not a rheostat, it's basically an on-off, so you will have to set uh, what you want in amps up on the panel and work with it that way. If you choose to use that, um, like I've said before, I'm a foot pedal guy. Let's go through and build the torch. Basically, Longevity supplies you with all of this here. You have three different uh, collets, one collet body, and three cups. And they give you a long and a short with this so you can uh, play with the different size tungsten uh, lengths. Uh, first thing we'll do to build the torch is we'll put in the collet body. And here again, that just screws in. Then you can drop your collet down through the top. And I've tested all of the different tungstens with this uh, unit and I've found that the blue tip, the 2% lanthanated, basically holds up the best on the aluminum side and works extremely well on the steel side. This just basically drops down through and then you'll put on your, your top and that down and I was doing some tight work so I used a number five cup and that's basically how it goes uh, goes together. We'll get a little stick out. I usually run about it somewhere around a quarter inch or so. And that's basically the torch with this unit. Here's our stinger for doing some stick welding. It's very nice. It's got real good spring tension and basically you can lay out how you want to put your rod in it, what your preferred method is for that. The stick slot. Basically I would remove the TIG torch and the two leads for the foot pedal and you'll just stick this in, give it a twist. Here I'm welding some 6061 T6 aluminum. I'm using some 4043 rod and 330 seconds. I do have a 330 second 2% lanthanated tungsten, which I feel that works the best on both steel and aluminum in this machine. You'll notice that the arc start just came in. The high frequency came in. Uh, there wasn't a sputter or doing anything weird. Um, Nice control over the puddle. Here again, we don't have a ton of dials to dial all of this in, so the factory's done that for you. Works really super good, super easy to use, and we just get a very nice and consistent bead and very good controllability on the arc. Here I am welding some 8th inch hot rolled 1010 steel. I'm using the ER70 S2 1 16th steel welding rod and as you can see this is really lighting up really nice running a really nice controlled arc and I'm just kind of keeping track of the heat and establishing a nice rhythm and carrying it through this welder really welds nice both on steel and aluminum If you're looking for a reliable, simple, and easy to use TIG welder that's super affordable that you could put anywhere from in the garage, a hobby shop, to a professional setting, I highly recommend the Longevity TIG Weld 200SX. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and I'll catch you here next time.